Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone and welcome to the annual Retro Game Lounge Holiday Special and Game Room Tour. Man, 2018 has been a crazy year here on the lounge. Lots of additions to the game room, the arcade, the collectibles room, and the brand new RGL video store. And as we do every year on Retro Game Lounge, going to be taking you all the way around every single room, the entire collection, showing you the changes, showing you the updates, all the good stuff, a little bit of stories along the way, a lot of special guests along the way, so you just have to stay tuned to find out. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get the tour started. Alright, so here we are in the Retro Game Lounge, just giving you a little pan around the room before we get started. Let you take it all in here. Okay, I guess we'll start over here on the what I call the RGL wall. Got those little light up RGL letters there. Some old school Nintendo posters, Smash TV, Double Dragon, the Nintendo uh, box poster, you know, coming with NES games and things. Blaster Master, that's a new addition. Of course, the Battle with East Starland. It's me and Chuck there. Little Mario poster. Good stuff. Then we got uh, a couple sort of new additions here. I've had these Nintendo carts before. Uh, but I went ahead and figured out how to add little TVs to them. These are, um, I think one of them is a Memorex or a Magnavox rather, and the other one's a Toshiba, but they're basically the same. And I just add a little NES to this one, so you can play. I got some little VHS storage down there, and we got basically the same thing over here. This one's the Toshiba. Playing this right here, playing with power. It's all these old school Nintendo commercials and stuff. A little really neat built-in DVD player. Got some VHS down there. And these uh, TVs are basically just like the perfect size for fitting on these little carts. So I had a few extras and decided to put them to use. So if you have a chance to pick one up, I urge you to do so because they're really neat and they have a really good picture and again, built-in DVD player. Can't beat that. Okay, so we'll start with uh, one of my favorite sections of the game collection. Let me move this light back here so we can actually see the turbo wall. Got the lounge signs up there, of course. Little neon hot pink lights. And uh, let's see, top we got the boxed accessories. We got the duo tap, the turbo pad, two of them actually. Turbo booster. Still don't have the plus yet, but I'm working on it. And we got the three boxed TurboGrafx systems. My original one is in that box from 1989. Got the uh, the free bonk edition. I don't have a holiday package yet. I'm still working on that, but got one from Montgomery Ward. You can see this was a later edition by the price, $99.99. And then we got the Turbo Collection, which I apologize. I tried to remind myself to give a count today, but I actually forgot to do that. But uh, if I had to give you a guess as far as where I'm at, I think it's 117, 116 out of 138. So it's slowing down for sure, but we're definitely getting there. You know, slowly but surely, you know, each game gets more expensive when we're making that climb to 138. Got some box games in there. Got some original turbo stickers. My, uh, Splatterhouse stickers. Got, if I can get the camera to focus. Come on, camera. No? Don't want to focus? Oh, well, anyways. These are a uh, Splatterhouse. Let's see if I can get it to show up there. There we go. Splatterhouse uh, shoestrings. Original ones. Yeah, TTI dealer. And we got the game collection. Try to keep them organized, of course, by color. Keep all the games together and everything. A lot more uh, turbo chip games than CD games. 
obviously. But still growing. I have a Turbo Graphics wallet, my spare Turbo Booster. Got Mr. Turbo Express right there. Turbo Express accessories. Got some spare sleeves. The original Turbo Graphics poster. The uh, CD case that's there. Turbo sticks and stickers, a spare poster, some PC Engine games, just some labels, you know, spare eyes and spare cases and stuff. You know, you can never have too much of that stuff. Back up and give you a full look at it there. Hey everybody, this is Mark the Game Shark here. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So next we got my uh, Legend of Zelda little chest. I'll pop it open so you can see it. It's all the uh, Legend of Zelda guidebooks. This is available on Amazon. You can see it's got a gold plate in there. All, everything's all embossed and everything like that. They're very, very beautiful. And it looks like a treasure chest from Link to the Past. And speaking of treasure chests, this is my uh, Nintendo original toy chest. Love that little thing right there. Very cool. Back during the kind of the height of Nintendo mania when they were kind of accessorizing the hell out of everything. Making just about everything under the sun with the Nintendo brand on it. Okay, then we pan over to the accessory cabinet. One of my favorite parts of the collection where I just got all my Nintendo accessories in there. Both licensed and unlicensed. You can see the orange zapper in there. Those are complete, guys. These aren't just boxes. These are legit full stuff. I think the, the Game Boy is the one exception. That's just a box. But uh, everything else is actually complete and has the actual item in there. Got the power glove over there. Pro Beam controller. A little Mario comic, man. The double player. Both versions of the Advantage. Added some Super Mario cereal. Got an original Donkey Kong, a laser scope, all kinds of Game Boy adapters, all that kind of good stuff. Zipper controllers. Um, I installed an LED lighting kit in this, in case I didn't mention that before. There's the Hudson uh, Soft uh, multi tap. There's uh, little LED strips that go, on the, go uh, in the top of the cabinet. I just thought it'd be really cool to have it light up, to have it uh, lit up. You know, much like you would have at the uh, the retail store, which is kind of what I was going for with this. And then we move up on top, and we got some box stuff. We got a power set, got a Super Scope Six, Nintendo Power. We got this is an awesome gift from my good buddy Willie from Arcade USA, the little working Oregon Trail. Killer Cut CD. Got my Wind Waker box. Some stuff behind here, I think. Oh, yes, another Super Mario Bros. cereal. There's a Mario lunch box back there. If I can not knock that down, this is a super cool gift from my nephews. How's it going, dudes? Super Mario Brothers power game, little Nintendo cases. Then this, um, I'm not really into amiibos, guys, but I just thought this was really cool. It's like a little thing where you can build it. You know, each of these blocks is kind of modular and. I just thought it would be really cool to have the little, you know, the ending of uh, Super Mario Brothers, and just have a little Mario amiibo there. You got a little, little one-up mushroom and a little power-up mushroom, and like he's making his way up to the flag. I thought that was cool. Got a box Nintendo 64 controller, got a Virtual Boy box, all kinds of accessories and junk. You know, just everything that just kind of doesn't fit anywhere. That's pretty much where it goes. Got over there Wii boxes, all kinds of obscure stuff. And on this side we got, so let's see, my Nintendo Switch. What do we got? The Resident Evil guns back there. The Game Boy, or the Game, is it the Game Boy? The GameCube backpack. We've got the blue Wii, the Wii Red, the Wii Mini. The Edge Joystick stick for the Nintendo NES Classic. Got my Man Cave Clock, birthday present from Mom and Dad. My original Nintendo Game Rack, I believe only sold at Toys R Us, if I remember right. My two amiibos, just Mario and Luigi. And then we have the Bomberman Shrine, my Bomberman collection, which is almost complete. We're getting there. A couple more games left. Um, the original Bomberman masks from the release of Super Bomberman 4 in Japan. I thought that was really cool. Uh, this was a very special gift from my buddy, Mr. Aaron Strange. 
He did a little one-off art piece for me. It's my man, Bomber Man. Rocking out the RGL shirt. We got the Bomber Man PC collection, little S Bomb controller. I love that. It's the shape like Bomber Man. The Bomber Man issue Nintendo Power for Bomber Man Hero. The multi tap for Super Nintendo, only released in Japan, or the Super Famicom, rather. Bomber Man styluses for the DS. Some Bomber Man Game Boy games. Little Bomber Man toys. Super Bomber Man party pack, of course. Gotta have that. And we got the actual collection NES, Turbo, more Turbo, Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, GameCube, Nintendo 64. Genesis, Dreamcast, regular NES, got the Bomberman mugs down there from my friend Sam, thanks so much for that. This is really cool. Let me see if I can get it to work. Makes like a really cool exploding noise. This is just a sample from when uh, I, I think it was one of the Super Bomberman games released. It's a toy only released in Japan. I thought it was really neat. Got a super cool gift from my buddy Crazy Kyle from Dirt Flix, a one of a kind Bomberman pillow made specifically for me. Absolutely love that thing. Awesome. Merry Xmas, everyone. Randomark3087 here, and this holiday season I'm playing Dead Rising 4 on the X-Bone. Now, technically, this is a horror game, but it takes place during the holiday season. You even fight a psychotic Santa Claus. I kind of just wish they kept the uh, dramatic death scenes for every time you fight one of the psychopaths, but hey, it's still a great game. And we can pan over here to kind of the main TV setup, I guess is what I call it. Uh, we got my PBMs, at least technically only two of them are, the, these two on the right here are JVC models, these are Sony's. Uh, if you've never seen a PVM in person, guys, and again, this video is not even going to come close to doing these justice. Uh, when it comes to playing old school games, man, this is pretty much as good as it gets. Uh, just the, the picture quality on these things is absolutely unbelievable, especially if you've got a console modded to run either component or preferably RGB. Uh, which is the purest form of analog signal, splits the colors a lot more evenly, and just looks absolutely spectacular on these things. Um, in this particular case, we got uh, Turbo Graphics, a little special output card there. It's running RGB to these two sets here, that these sets are chain linked. And then we got the Turbo Duo. I'm not going to pull it out because I don't want to you know, mess anything up here, but uh, Turbo Duo is over there, and that's hooked up to these two over here, just running regular composite. But as you can see guys, even on regular composite, this is like a super duper clear picture. Um, I do hope to get my Duo modded to at least component or preferably RGB at some point, but even just regular good old fashioned composite looks like a million bucks on these. And uh, let me show you guys a little neat trick. I've actually got these chain linked together so you can see I can switch these back and forth. So they're all linked up, so you can basically watch like three screens at once, or two screens, or you know whatever it is that you want to do. Thought that was really neat. Uh, then we got one more over here, my other Sony PVM, rocking the Sega Genesis. Got a little Sonic action going. Man, look at those bright colors. Look how awesome that looks. So Mr. Chief Hunt, or Master Chief Hunt, our brother, keeping it company, and it just looks great. This one's just running composite. As an FYI, guys, I don't have the component cable for this yet, but. Even with that, man, Sonic still looks awesome. And then we go over here, next to the PVMs, we got a, uh, this is a consumer grade, regular Sony Trinitron, 20 inch. Uh, we've got my Super Nintendo down there, which has been modified to run component out. And we got some Super Bomberman 2 action going on here, and just the picture quality on this, man, even just the jump to component is so awesome. It's so much of a massive, massive improvement over composite. I mean, just the quality of the colors, you know, the way the colors just want to jump off the screen and everything. I mean, look at that. It's just bright and crystal clear. It just looks so, so wonderful. And especially when you're looking at something like a Sony Trinitron. Um, you know, if you can't get a hold of something like a PVM, a Trinitron is the way to go. You can find these on Craigslist and your secondary markets. Half the time they're giving them away free or really cheap. You know, go ahead and grab one while you can. And it's sitting on top of my third Nintendo cart, the Big Daddy which was designed to hold the television. These ones over here were just designed to hold the NES console, but uh, this one was designed to hold the console and a TV. So moving right along, right above the entry door here, we got the Nintendo Super System sign. 
on the, on the original Super System uh, that was released in arcades. Got a Boo and a Dr. Mario. I think they were like a dollar at my local grocery store, so I grabbed those. Got some Mario Brothers Hot Wheels. Kind of moving down the games. Mario 1, Mario 2, Mario 3, Dr. Mario, Super Mario World, Mario Kart. Kind of modern Mario down there. Then we got the Nintendo uh, Complete Unbox sets. All these are complete. We got the action set. Two players with the gun. Mario and Duck Hunt, kind of the classic one. The control deck. The Nintendo Player's Guide, the special edition. Challenge set with Super Mario 3. That was a very important one. Got a Contra figure back there. The, the Contra figures, rather, from NECA. My Nintendo sign, which does not currently work because it's a piece of crap, but that's okay. And then we got my little uh, Pixel Pals which run on uh, AAA batteries. Kind of neat, they light up. We got all three of the links there. Red ring, blue ring, and standard green link. Mario and Luigi, Raccoon Mario, and of course the blue bomber. Simon Belmont hanging out back there. We got the uh, Nintendo Classic Edition there, complete. The Super NES Classic, complete. Got the Edge Gamepad. Got the spare NES controller up there. The original, thanks Willie, appreciate that. And then we pan down to the actual NES games. So as always guys, the way I've got these uh, listed, the way I've got these organized hasn't changed. I just do it by publisher. We got the black box titles, so all the original Nintendo stuff is up top. Kind of moves right through there and then we go down to Capcom. Moving right along, going to Data East. What do we got? SNK, Tecmo, Ultra slash Konami, all kinds of good stuff. LJN, Jallico, more Tecmo, sorry I went kind of backwards there. More Ultra, Tato, I don't know what that one is. Can't remember all of these. Sunsoft, Hudson Soft of course, my favorite. Double Dragon series there. Milton Bradley. And there's an infamous one, Dr. Juggle and Mr. Hyde. Dig Dug 2. Ghoul School. Amagon. Love that game. Great stuff here. We got the unlicensed games there, the kind of the misfits. All the stuff without labels. Got the original uh, Mario and Bowser kind of bookends there. Got some of the McDonald's toys. A few more NES games there. A little Mario question block. Got some complete inbox games. Got some of the black box titles there. Cleaning kits. Absolutely love those. We got Punch Out. RC Pro Am. Star Tropics. Got some Capcom games there. Chiller. My rarest complete in box game. And we got the Konami series. Look at all those silver boxes. I love how uniform that is. Kid Nicky, Werewolf. Got some Jallico games. Bases Loaded, one of my favorite baseball games. Paperboy. And some of the Ultra games over there. Good stuff. Hey Mike from the Rat Collectors. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. To you and your family, I want to thank Jimbo and the Retro Game Lounge for actually featuring me in this. And these are the games I'm going to be playing over the holidays. L.A. Noir and Infamous Second Son for the PlayStation 4. I'm going to be looking forward to actually cracking into these both. I've already started L.A. Noir and didn't get very far. Infamous Second Son, I was a game that I was looking forward to actually playing from the first time I got my PlayStation 4. And I can't wait to play that over the holidays. I hope you guys stay safe over the holidays and enjoy gaming. So moving right along, we got uh, kind of the next cabinet here. Up top we got some big box games. We got the Super Game Boy, Mario Paint, Arkanoid. That's an NES big box, one of the very few ones. Lethal Enforcers. That's basically, I think, all of them except, um, I mean, Bomberman is over there, as you saw earlier, but uh, I think this is all of them except for Earthbound. And we got some signs. We got my original Nintendo GameCube sign. $50 Craigslist find. Nintendo 64 sign, 
Really glad I got this before these things went through the damn roof. And we got uh, Nintendo 64 and a Generation 2 Super Nintendo, the Toys R Us exclusive. And then we got some more NES games over here. More boxed games. We got Lolo, got some Tato games, the Hudson Soft boxes, some of the unlicensed stuff. We got some Game Boy, I think F1, SNK, Double Dragon, some LJN games. We got Friday the 13th, some more, a lot, lot of NES games actually. Star Fox, there's one, kind of a random box there. Marble Madness, Spy Hunter, Blaster Master, Final Fight, into the Super Nintendo games. More of those down here. Got cleaning kits. Rival Turf, Saturday Night Slam Masters, love it. Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Ghoul Patrol, although that's just a box, unfortunately. Got some Nintendo 64 boxes, don't have too many of these. But we got Resident Evil 2, a couple Turoks. Uh, cleaning kits, controller pack, gotta have the cleaning kit. Then we got some Wii games, I'm very selective with these as far as which ones I actually like. Um, but it's a great system uh, when it comes to anthologies. This is one of the best, in my opinion. Since you got all kinds of great collections on here, like uh, Metal Slug Anthology, Samurai Shodan Anthology, the King of Fighters collection, Ghost Squad, Target Terror, the Mad Dog McCree collection. This is just great, great compilations. Got some GameCube over here. Again, just really selective about which ones. Got the loose N64 carts. Some 3DS and Game Boy games down there. Gold N64 controller. A little bit of Wii U at the Super Mario All Stars Wii Edition, complete finally. Not much in the Wii Wii U, just very selective. And we got my little Wii stand, so you can see it's shaped like a Wii, which is really neat. Hold some of my limited controllers up there. A few Wii U games and Wii games. Got a spare Wii down there. And then on to the final. Nintendo cabinet. We got a Super Nintendo box. Another Super NES box. A third Super NES box. Seeing a mode motif here. So we got some loose Super Nintendo games. Got some uh, some of my favorite ones out front. Ease, Wanderers from Ease. Ease 3, Pilot Wings, Supernova, Big Sky, Trooper, Su Saturday Night Slam Masters, Joe and Mac. Raiden, Sunset Riders, Dracula X, that's a bootleg, not gonna lie. Castlevania 4, Super Valus 4, Super Ch Chase HQ, we got some Bomberman games back there, original Nintendo games, all kinds of stuff. Again, just real selective about the which which ones I like. I like the beat em ups, the Super Nintendo, the original Nintendo games, and uh, the shooters are my favorites, but there are others. What's up, guys? Happy holidays from the Vectrix family. I hope you guys are having a good day. This Christmas, I'm gonna be playing Skyrim, about 150 hours into it, and I'm gonna try to beat it. And we pan over up top, sorry about the lights, I'll try and get above them here. We got my uh, little perler art. A Zeke from Zombies Ate My Neighbors, Samus Aran, Excite Bike, Triforce, Link, Bubble Bobble. Still around over here so you can see. And we got the Trifecta from Hudson Soft, Bomberman, Master Higgins, and Bonk. Kind of the overflow back there. You can see my super high-tech lighting that I use for the show. And this is what it looks like when I live stream, ladies and gents. This is kind of my gameplay monitor. This is a 34-inch Sony XBR Super Fine Pitch Trinitron. It is an HD TV. It so it does have HDMI and runs 1080i or 720p, but it also handles analog signals quite well. Uh, we got some what is this Monster World? I think on Xbox 360, the Monster World Collection, which is really neat. Got a laser disc player and a VHS down there, of course. Got to have those little spare Nintendo and Xbox stereo receiver. This is my monitor that I'm looking at when I'm chatting with you guys. It's a 60-inch Vizio, 
basically just a television that I cannibalized into a monitor. And over here we got my Killian's Irish Red sign, that's my go-to beer, and my Konami Multicade, which unfortunately, unfortunately has a flat screen in it, but that's okay. Just a little cheap arcade find. Uh, you may ask Jimbo why is it not downstairs in the arcade? Well, because it's not a real arcade, not in my opinion. These things were sold at like Target and it's made of like particle board, so it's not really the real thing. So I just figured it'd be neat to have like a little multi-cade system up here. And this one has all kinds of great games on it. Green Beret, Arcade Contra, Castlevania, uh, Frogger, Gyrus, Hypersports, Super Basketball, Blades of Steel, the arcade version, which is a lot of fun if you've never played that. Much, much more, much more fun uh, than the NES version, although I like the NES version. And we go over here, we got kind of the second kind of console set, I guess you could say, on top of the PVMs. Got my original Donkey Kong poster up there. Mario asking, dude, what? Where's my Game Boy? And we got two little sets here. Got a little VCR combo, rocking some Captain N. This is the really cool tape where uh, Captain N and Legend of Zelda actually crossed over, so excuse me, princess, met Captain N, which was neat. Uh, this is one of my favorite televisions that I own, guys. I spent almost two years trying to find one of these. This is a Sony Trinitron 13-inch that actually has component inputs on the back. It's running my NES, as you can see underneath it, which has been modified to run component out. And uh, this TV actually has a really adorable nickname, at least I think it is. It's known in the CRT uh, online forum circles as the Mini Trini, because it's the smallest Trinitron that had component input, and the smallest one that they made, which I thought was really neat. These are very, very rare. They didn't make too many of them, but I'll be damned if it doesn't have a really, really awesome picture. Again, this video is not going to do it justice because it's a CRT and the refresh rate is slower than my camera, but. These things look like a million bucks in person, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. They really do, especially when you got an old school system with component out. They, these just look awesome. And we pan down a little bit here. We got some Game Boy games. Again, very selective. I'm not definitely not a hardcore Game Boy collector. I just kind of go after the ones that I want. A lot of the original Nintendo ones. We got some of the Ninja Turtle games. Blaster Master Boy, that's a cool one. The Contra games. Atomic Punk, also known as Bomberman. R-Type. Uh, DX and regular R-Type, a few Game Boy Advance games, got some kind of system overflow here, got an N64 and a Saturn, a GameCube, a Dreamcast, I have like three or four of those things, just a few extra spare parts, things like that. There's my sister's original Game Boy right there, still works by the way, not too well. Uh, my Triforce Edition, Nintendo 3DS XL. Ho 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 Retro Game Lounge, it's Kevin here from Happy Beard Games. And this time of year, I'm going to be playing and enjoying, with my friends and family, the video game Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for Nintendo Switch. A very long-running series with many memorable characters, lots of fun, staying warm with the friends and family this holiday season. Merry Christmas, everyone, from Kevin at Happy Beard Games. And of course, not forgetting the retro couch. You can't leave this out with its super cool cartridge pillows that are complete, I guess you can actually blow on them. Unicorn's Revenge and Lava Jump. Just saw those pillows and thought it would be absolutely perfect for this couch and this is a $50 couch at a yard sale. You know, for a sofa, it's not even a real couch. I just thought that would be absolutely perfect uh, for the lounge because it's the right size and just cool to sit down on, you know, enjoy yourself some video games there on the Trinitron. And we go over here to kind of the second portion of the Turbo Graphics collection. Got another Turbo sign up there. Uh, this is my complete Turbo Play slash Turbo Force slash Duo World collection that I spent several years trying to piece together kind of issue by issue and I recently completed it actually this year. Um, I have the issues arranged in chronological order. Splatterhouse issue back there, that's one of my favorites. So all of these are in order by month. There's Turbo Play. We go down here and it turns into Turbo Force, which didn't last very long, and then the three issues of Duo World, which again, didn't last long either. We got some extra stuff, we got TurboGrafx Secrets, the TurboGrafx Encyclopedia, the original uh, free video brochure which came in the mail for TurboGrafx. This is a store tape, they would play it like um, Toys R Us and things like that, just showing kind of a demo reel of the Turbo Duo. Got a Turbo Duel manual down there. 
some uh, sealed Turbo Graphics games. Alien Crush, Galaga, Final Twin, or Final Lap Twin, excuse me. World Class Baseball, Sports TV Football, Tennis, Power Golf. Back up so you can see it again. It's on kind of like a newsstand, just kind of displaying everything there. Then we come over here to the disc based section where we got uh, PlayStation, Xbox, Xbox 360, PlayStation 2, things like that. Time Crisis, PS Uno combo there, PS2 complete in box, uh, several of them actually, mini and a regular, King Fighters 2001, limited uh, control stick there, my original PlayStation and PlayStation 2 signs. The original PlayStation sign was on top of the, uh, I'm sure you guys remember the big black PlayStation uh, retail cabinets that held all the games. That's what it came on top of originally. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the cabinet. I tried though. And we got some PlayStation 1 games, long box games. Love those, love collecting those. Those are a lot of fun. Kind of running out of space there. Got some PS2 games. Again, very selective about these guys. I just get the ones that I want, you know. Um, Contra series, Resident Evil, uh, King of Fighters games, absolutely love those. Things like that. Call of Cthulhu is a rare Xbox game. Had that since it was new. R-Type Final, Raiden, gotta have Raiden, dude. One of my favorite video game series. Down to the Xbox, original Xbox collection. Again, very selective with the ones that I get. I don't just buy anything. Jaws, Hunter the Reckoning, love that. God, they need they need to bring Hunter the Reckoning series, both of them, um, to modern Xbox. I think one of them is Xbox One compatible, but they need to bring them both. Uh, the two Metal Slug games, again, those are rare. Done some more Xbox over here, Shenmue 2. We got my little uh, kind of Fallout shrine there. Vault Boy, the Pixel Pal there, got the Nuka-Cola sign, the Survival Guide, the Pip-Boy, little Aliens Clone and Marine sign, Splatterhouse statue in the box, a little chainsaw, Resident Evil. Got some Xbox 360 games there, Gears of War and Halo, of course you gotta have those. It's just all kinds of good odds and ends there. And lastly for the lounge, we got the Sega Collection. Just kind of working our way around the room here, and I guess this is the last nook to explore. Got my Sega sign up there. Nights into Dreams with the control pad. We got a fishing controller. Genesis. First generation. Lethal Enforcers. A little Sega VHS tape. Some Sega CD32X. Got all of those. All the CD32X games complete. Sega CD games. Got some Genesis games, Saturn, more Sega CD over there. Got some loose Genesis games. We got some Dreamcast over here. Again, I just go after the ones I want on that. Little keychain consoles over there. Some Saturn boxed accessories. Little Virtual Cop, Dreamcast. More Genesis accessories. We got some more stuff over here. Got a third generation Sega. Second generation, or third generation, Sega Genesis, excuse me. The second generation's right below it. Box 32X. Saturn in the box. Quick pan over here so I can show you the whole thing. Okay, so one last pan around the lounge before we call it here. Let's see if the old snapperoo works. We're gonna go on to the collector's crypt room next. All right, let's give this a shot. Collector's crypt room. Nah. Whew. Okay. Whew. We made it. All right. So here we are in the collectibles room, ladies and gents. Give you a quick pan around the room here before we begin. Again, lots to see in here. Tons of good stuff. Okay, 
So we'll start over here. Masters in the Universe wall, I guess. Got a few other odds and ends. Oh, original G.I. Joe found at a yard sale for a dollar. Slave Leia, discontinued. It's in the newer Masters of the Universe figures there. Big Trouble in Little China. Egg and Wang. Classics collection. A commemorative series. One and two. Found those at a thrift store. Commemorative He-Man. Original Whiplash. That's my only original Masters of the Universe box figure. Tila, all kinds of good stuff. Then we got the original two, man. Kind of the, the freaking yin and yang here. Got He-Man on Battle Cat. Got Skeletor. On. Got a Merman statue from my buddy Savage Matt. Love him. Little He-Man and Skeletor diorama over there. That's cool. Weird art style. Got my Darkness statue, which is missing like four pieces thanks to moving. Which sucks. That's okay though. Sculpted by Claiborne Moore. Love that thing. One of my favorite comic characters. <clears throat> this is uh, from Robot Chicken, Skeletor, and Molar, the Attorney and Dentist. We got two of the newer Master of the Universe figures here that uh, were made uh, to look like the actual cartoon show. Because if you, you know, if you look at the original figure, you know he kind of looks like the cartoon, but not really. But this one, they made him to look basically exactly like the cartoon. My camera would focus, you could see that, but... Got He-Man and Beast-Man. Super cool. Got the Lunchbox collection over here. He-Man Lunchboxes, of course. Thundercats. Ninja Turtles, Pac-Man, the real Ghostbusters. Silverhawks. Mask, Transformers. WWF with the Hulkster. Gem, G.I. Joe, many more to come on that. That's an active collection. Then we got kind of the kind of the horror collection over here. Starting with Tales from the Crypt. That's an original EC display from the 90s when they brought the series back. That's really neat. Those are not easy to find. Some original uh, reprints of the Tales from the Crypt and EC comics, shock suspense stories. My Darkness Snow Globe again. Labor more. That's a really neat one. It's a music box too. Some of the Toast and the Crypt comics. Again, these are reprints, guys. I don't have the originals from the 50s. Those things would be incredibly beat up anyway, so I just like to read them. So the reprints from the 90s are fine with me. Then we got some of the new series over here. Little miniature graphic novels. Toast and the Crypt, the Crypt Keeper Candelabra. Crypt Keeper in the chair. Like you turn him on, he's like, ah! You know, starts laughing. Kind of vibrates and stuff. Got the Crypt Keeper game back there. Horror Hound with Crypt Keeper on the cover. Then we got my Movie Maniacs figures collection here. Again, a work in progress. Snake, missing his gun. I'm still looking for that. Mr. Ashley J. Williams, Army of Darkness. Jason Voorhees from Jason Goes to Hell. Freddy Krueger. And Leatherface. We got some more Tales from the Crypt here. We got some Vault of Horror, Haunt of Fear. Pretty much anything in that series interests me. I'm an absolute Tales from the Crypt fanatic. Got the new issue of Fangoria over there. Great magazine. You guys got to pick that up if you're a Fango fan like me. Go down here. We got some Mad Ball stuff. The two Mad Balls lunch boxes. Those are not easy to find. Got some of the hardcover reprints of the EC comics in both black and white and color. These are the color ones uh, from Dark Horse. And uh, let's see, it's Gemstone, IDW, and I think Dark Horse, you know, between the three of them, kind of publish them. Or IDW, rather, they publish these kind of one-offs here. Those are, apologize, those are not related to the Tales from the Crypt, but kind of the, the other horror comics, you know, that are not EC Comics related. And we got some of the box sets here, Shock Suspense Stories, Weird Science, Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror. It's good stuff over there. It's your boy, the one, the only, the shallot. This season I'll be busting out an old school adventure in Fantasy Star. Merry Christmas. Stay trashy, you dirty bastards. And we got my Tales from the Crypt Keeper action figure collection, which is complete. Crypt Keeper, Frankenstein, Dracula. Crypt Keeper again in his little tux. 
werewolf. Got two of the googly eyes. Those are really hard to find. They glow in the dark. Uh, the gargoyle. The mummy. The zombie. We go over here to the Mad Bulls collection. Again, work in progress. Just kind of get these as they come. Loved these as a kid, and I'm glad that they're still putting them out. Uh, kid Robot uh, does a lot of them. And puts these out in various conditions. Love these, man. The, got the Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger Mad Ball. Those are really neat. Okay, then we pan over here. We got back up so you can see it. Got Snake Mountain and Castle Grayskull. I know this is a faux pas, guys. I got new He-Man over here, but that's okay. I just wanted something to put on top of it. And that Grayskull is complete, as an FYI. Uh, Snake Mountain is all there, but um, I need to take apart the little microphone thing that you hold in your hand so you, you can speak through Snake Mountain. Trying to get that to work, but I will get that done. Got some Skeleton Warriors. Little Smack Ups. Tony Traffic Cone, Street Shark. Coming in from McFarlane Toys, Sin City, Marv. Got some more Master Universe figures. Stratos, you know, the Battle Ram. Stinkor, Buzz Off, Faker, Merman. All kinds of good stuff. We got a spare couple of mounts there. We got some spare parts. We got Trap Jaw, riding a gigantic Manus thing. Got some muscles in the, in the original trash can there. Hey, what's going on guys? Aaron Strange here, stopping by to say Merry Christmas because Jimbo held me at gunpoint to do this little video. And it's gonna be like 30 seconds long, just like me in bed. And I was told not to swear, so thankfully this video is gonna be less than 30 seconds, or slightly over 30 seconds. Oh crap, I'm already at like 20 seconds. Anyway, he asked me to uh, mention which game I'm gonna be playing this holiday season. I haven't played a game of my own in forever, so I'm probably gonna be playing Smash Brothers Ultimate with my brother who also might be appearing in this video. So uh, yeah, take care of yourselves, guy. Take care of yourselves, guy? What? Uh-oh, I went over by 36 seconds. 37, 38, see you later. Couple posters over here, new. We got the uh, Survival Sunday when I went to see The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead when they showed the, the finale for last season in the theater. That was really cool. We got to watch them back to back in the movie theater. The Fangoria poster, this came with the new, new issue. Kind of the who's who of horror on there, which is really cool. And then we got uh, Garbageville Kids posters. Again, I'm just being lazy. I do have the fourth one. I just haven't put it in the frame yet. So I do have all four. I will put it up. We'll probably get that done for the next episode of Collector's Crypt. But they're all there. 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B. And we got the Garbageville Kids collection. Still ongoing. We got some original ones there. We got some of the modern ones. Some of the little miniature Funko figures. But they put out the blind boxes. Hillary Billery, Donald Dumpty. A little extra Mad Ball stuff. I always get a complete box, a uh, little blaster box when they bring it out um, every year. Every time they do a new uh, Garbage Bowl Kids series, I always grab another one. I like having those. I also get a complete card set. Garbage Bowl Kids stickers box. We get some original Garbage Bowl Kids series box. Get it. What is that, an ETTV tray? I think I've had that since I was a kid. All kinds of accessories and things over here. An original collector's case. I had one of these when I was young. Tacky snappers. This is a neat little art book. Shows kind of the, the artwork from some of the figures. More tacky snappers. We got a untouched Garbage Pill Kids button box, which I really need to dust because that's freaking dirty, but it is complete. You can see the factory box underneath it, so it's all there. Some more accessories. We got some keychains, some little puffy stickers. I used to love those things when I was a kid. Uh, the magnet cards, little pencil toppers, the balloons, zipper pulls, bouncy balls. Got some of the binders here. These are the newer binders. Again, they tend to put one of these out, and there's the 30th anniversary series. They put one of these out every time they do a new series. I usually get at least one. Got Adam Bomb down there. And I'll show you the rest of it. Okay, so now that we're done with the collectibles room, I think it's time to head on down and check out my favorite video store, the one and only RGL video. So here we go.
So here we are in my favorite video store, RGL Video. Give you a quick pan around. Let you look at our inventory, new releases and everything. Got some Christmas specials going on right now. Be sure and ask your rental representative for details on purchasing or rental. So let's go ahead and get started. Of course, showing a new release, Beavis and Butthead Do Christmas here, available on VHS for your rental viewing pleasure. And we go over here to the bulk of our VHS inventory. Got a great mix of things, horror, action, drama, comedy, all kinds of great stuff. Got Elvira keeping everything company over there. Movies for kids, movies for mom and dad. We got everything covered here. Laser disc, we got a special selection here featuring the two Corys, two of the favorite actors of RGL video on Laserdisc and on VHS. Got our Laserdisc section over here. Again, we got some holiday specials, brand new release, Chevy Chase and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And of course, A Christmas Story, newly released on Laserdisc. All kinds of great things for you to select from. Even more Laserdiscs over here, again, all available for rental. We also do have a selection of NES video games available for rental. Got some video game related VHS tapes here if you need some quick tips and tricks on your NES games or your Turbo Graphics. We have all of your rental needs covered here at RGL Video. But if there's anything that you want that you don't see, please ask your rental representative and we'll see if we can get it for you. Thank you for stopping by RGL Video. Remember, be kind, rewind, and we'll see you next year. Hello everyone, Willie from Arcade USA, and you're watching the Retro Game Lounge. Hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas this year. And for the holidays, I plan on playing Galaga 90 on my TurboGrafx 16. Yes, Jim. Two bros for life. Ah. All right, so it's time for one of my favorite sections of the RGL Holiday Tour. The arcade. Of course, you can't have an arcade without an arcade sign and an open sign. Got to let everyone know that you're open, right? All right. Do a quick pan around the room here. So let's go ahead and get the tour started. I'm going to have to speak up here so make sure everybody can hear me. Okay, so starting over in the corner here, we got Silkworm. I'm kind of hiding over here. Really cool two player Tecmo game. Fan favorite. Then we got Black Tiger from Capcom. That's a really fun one player game. Really neat. Then we got one that apparently decided to. Uh, to make me look bad here, so it was working fine this morning, but I guess the power supply went out when it came time to shoot it, and that's Magic Sword, which was otherwise working. I guess we just need a new power supply, but that's no big deal. It's a really nice cabinet. Wish you could see it working, but that's okay. These things happen. Any of my arcade collecting friends out here know that. Just things like that happen. Got some Gem and the Holograms going up there on the TV. Here we got Double Axel. My driving game over here. That's a really fun kind of monster truck game. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. That's a good one. Got Twin Eagle. Really cool helicopter shooter with an incredibly catchy uh, voice sample soundtrack that just gets in your head. And we got Robocop from Data East. My buddy uh, Big Willie Style from Arcade USA. It's one of his favorites. That's a good one. Ninja Turtles from Konami, four player of course. That's a fan favorite. We got POW, Prisoners of War from SNK. That's a fun one, a lot of people like that one. 
lot of people remember the NES game. Final Fight, of course, one of the greatest beat-em-ups ever. That's one people really enjoy. Got the token machine, of course, which, of course, still dispenses free tokens. Just push the old button. Of course, you can't have tokens without a token cup, courtesy of Chuck E. Cheese. Gotta have a token cup. We got Golden Axe 2, the Revenge of Death Adder, 4 player. Looking spiffy as hell. Great cabinet right there. And then we got another one that needs a little bit of love here. Dark Adventure from Konami, as seen as in our Arcade USA. The monitor's just giving me a little bit of trouble. That's why it looks kind of blue. I think we just need to swap that monitor out. Well, that's okay. Really neat three-player game. Just going to take a little bit of extra love, but we'll get it running. Raiden, the king of bullet hell shooters. One of my favorite arcade games ever. Very happy to have this one in my collection. An original Tecmo sign up there. There's nowhere else to put it, so I put it above the Konami game because it won't, it won't sit flat on silkworms. It's not a flat cabinet, but we got Konami Aliens. This one's a fan favorite here for everyone who comes by to visit. A lot of people just seem to gravitate towards this one because they don't remember it from their childhood, but I certainly do. And we got the Neo Geo featuring the 161 and 1 multi cart. All the games you've ever wanted to play. Metal Slug, King of Fighters, World Heroes, Fatal Fury, Shock Troopers, Burning Fight Man, you name it. It's all here. All the revisions and everything, it's all good. And we got Kagakai from Romstar. Really, really fun game. Kind of like a kind of a quirky kind of boxing game. You just kind of face one dude, you know, each round, just got to punch the crap out of him. Very, very difficult game, actually. One of, one of my earliest arcade games that I bought. Very neat game, though. Very fun. Very addictive. Fun to play against your friends with. I'll back up here and give you another quick pan around the room. So you can see what it looks like. Kind of tucked in the corner back here. There are 15 total games in here. Well... There was until Magic Sword decided to take a crap today. That's okay. We'll get that up and running. And back up here so you can see it from this angle. So, got a nice kind of wide selection of stuff. All kinds of things for people to play and enjoy. You got some extras up here. Got some tapes. I like to keep a good rotation for the VHS tapes and the DVDs. Silverhawks, Dungeons and Dragons, Galaxy Rangers, Defenders of the Earth, Super Mario Brothers Show, Beavis and Butthead. Got some hair metal concert tapes in there. Of course, we got the same lounge sign that we have upstairs. I just got to put the pink bulbs in it. Got the Rampage figures. Got a talking butthead. Bad Dudes Arcade Cabinet. What do we got over here? Ah, we got Warrant in concert. Dirty Rotten for the Stinking Rich. So, one change, I guess, from the last time you saw it is I kind of changed the layout. Instead of the four going across that wall, I kind of made it in layers. So you got two cabinets over here, and then you got the main, main drag down here. Uh, it's basically the best that I could do to squeeze 15 cabinets in here. But we made it work. 15 cabinets. Well, almost 15. <laughs> until Magic Store decided to stop cooperating, but that's alright. It's probably the original power supply, and again, stuff like that just happens. We got the LED neon lights surrounding the room, little kind of wave pattern right there. Those are not expensive to do. Just buy the multicolor ones. It comes with a little remote, so you can you can change the colors if you're not really feeling pink. And purple, green, you know, whatever, whatever you want. You can just kind of daisy chain them there. Good stuff. Thank you so much, everyone, for stopping by, and a very, very special thanks to all of my friends here on YouTube for contributing a segment for this video. Again, happy holidays and Merry Christmas, and I'll see you guys in 2019.
Whew, man, another holiday special in the camp. What the heck was that? Hello? Man, thanks Santa!